you guys you guys remember the commercial oh uh, yeah. it's like i do you when, and me yeah no matter how we toss the dice i know i know we're supposed costume. to be talking about melee but like this this is, this yeah. is the intro to the world right right like, and then and you had like donkey kong and yoshi and mario all like yeah they're all and, 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 whatnot. Each other. and then like yoshi throws a kick to pikachu's like leg and just <laughs> takes him out and then they all like Donkey Kong just lays into Pikachu <laughs> and Mario drop kicks Donkey Kong. And they're all like they're all people in these big fluffy big suits, like yeah. fat suit costumes, yeah. right? So they're just people wrestling in the grass. We're a retro video gaming podcast where three guys smash. No home run bat. And we're linking up to talk about the games we love. We're your hosts. I'm Steve. I'm Dan. And I'm Don. And this is episode number 24. This week's episode is on Super Smash Brothers Melee. So get ready to upload data from us to you. But first... Let's set the scene. There are things in this world that will always harken back to your youth. Do you remember how you met your best friends, your significant other, or your favorite pets? These are memories that will be ingrained with you for your entire life. For me, I remember the first time I played Super Smash Bros. Melee. I remember all of my friendships that I bonded with over this game, and it's truly a special thing that I'll hold dear forever. Most of my strongest friendships and rivalries were through this game. Saturday afternoons and Friday night sleepovers. 99 stock matches, teams, free-for-alls. The rush that you get when it's last stock, game five, or even when watching competitive Smash still after all these years. Cheering for your favorites. The excitement and the joy of playing Smash is unlike anything else. It truly is in a league of its own. Super Smash Brothers is the most influential game to some of my closest friendships and strongest bonds. That's all I can say about how this game makes me feel. How about you guys? Excited? Yeah, absolutely. This game's amazing. So I many don't think memories. A more, I don't think there's a more cable clubby game out there than Super Smash Brothers Melee. No, definitely not. We had so much fun with it these past two weeks, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to keep it rolling. <laughs> I I think that's a good time. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we had people in the Discord too joining in. Uh, I think it was Lysanthia. Um, he was hanging out with us. It it was a lot of fun. Yeah, team battles, random team battles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so great. But also the one on one play is so good. But anyway. <laughs> We're going to have plenty of time to gush about that. Dan, you want to uh, take it off with question of the week or questions? We have two. Two. A two for two. two in the mailbag. However, they right. do that. So, the first one What was the first game you ever beat? Submitted by Hapney. What a, what a great question. <laughs> so, from my earliest memories, I'm going to say it's probably Mega Man 6 on the Nintendo. So my dad was a huge Mega Man fan, and that's where I got it from. And, um, well, 6 is easy. That's probably why it's the one I beat first. Is it? I don't have that much exposure to it. Yeah, so my dad would always go to the Blockbuster, and he would always get, like, the newest Mega Man game as they came out. So I can even remember, like, the first boss I beat is Tomahawk Man. And I think I probably used, like, five sub-tanks to beat him because I was probably, like, five years old. But I remember being, like, so proud of myself. When I actually did beat them, I don't think I beat the game then. I think I was a couple years older, but like I'm pretty sure Mega Man Six was the first game that I've beaten. What about you guys? Yeah, I he he asked this question and I was like, oh, that's <laughs> gonna keep me up because I really, really had to think about it. Like it, it was I, hard. I got cause... <laughs> like some of my earliest video game memories are like the list of games that I had that I would just like beat religiously, right? Like I had like the Toy Story Sega Genesis game that I would like kick the crap out of basically every other day. I had like um Vector Man 2 that I used to beat all the time. Um but like the first time I ever rolled credits on a game is like uh I mean I feel like it's got to be either Sonic 3 just oh, cuz really? like I I I remember the first like 
place that we lived that I actually had my Sega Genesis at. And like, and I remember being like super excited to fight that final boss. It was like this, like, like if you know Sonic 3, um, if you play it without the Knuckles cartridge, you fight a different boss at the end of the first half of the game. It's like a uh, Robotnik outfits, his big hovercraft with these big, like robot arms. That boss yeah. was tough as a kid. It is. Yeah, it is. And like, I, I remember being on the edge of my seat. He's got spikes on the top of his head, so you can't jump on him. You have to like jump over his arms and then like thread the needle and hit him dead on. And Robotnik's forms always take eight hits. And I remember counting as a kid being like, all right, one, <laughs> not all right, two. Like, you know, like I, I was just like counting, you know, trying to collect a ring every time I got hit. But he would do this attack where he'd like slam you. And then by the time we was done with the animation, it was really hard to get your rings. So like, yeah, it's either that or it could actually be Pokemon Blue. Because oh, that's it a good was just one. like so approachable for me at the age that I got it at. And I was so into Pokemon. When did you get it? Uh, I got it in like fourth grade. So that yeah, would have put me in fourth grade as well. But yeah, I... at like nine, nine years There's old. There's no I way think. you had beaten any other games before the fourth grade. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Like I said, it's really it's really hard to tell. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna say Sonic Three on yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good choice. Um, so kind of to uh, you know, go parallel with Dan's story here. Um, I remember playing when I was young Castlevania Two and Castlevania Three. We owned Castlevania Three, and I remember feeling so proud when I got to that first boss after you climb all the stairs in the the chapel or whatever and it's like you know it's got the stained glass and then you fight this skeleton knight thing and i remember beating that and feeling like so accomplished like you know three or four years old yeah it's almost like you beat the game in itself when you beat that first boss as a kid yeah because it was like the first hurdle right that's how i felt i was like yeah i, I pretty much beat the game because i beat a boss <laughs> yeah um, oh good times but i think the first game i rolled credits on I was five, and uh, I had not started kindergarten quite yet um, because I have a summer birthday. And um, I got a Sega Genesis for Christmas, and the only game that I had was Sonic 1. And um, I'm fairly certain that Sonic was the first game that I got credits on. Uh, I just spammed the shit out of that game. I played it all day every day during the summer. And even before that, but it took me a while to beat because uh, Scrap Brain Zone and Labyrinth Zone are both pretty tough. Um, yeah. Even now, going back, they're kind of tough. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the first one that I, I dumped enough hours in, and that's where I kind of cut my teeth. Even though I played a bunch of NES, my mom had an NES uh, before we got a Genesis, and we had an Atari, but... Same. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember beating any of those games, but I remember playing some of them. I think Sonic the Hedgehog was my first one. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. I didn't beat NES games till I got older. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> it was in like high school basically <laughs> oh, when really? I decided wow. to to U turn on that thing. Yeah, go get like some education as to what a hard game is. Right, <laughs> it, was like, it was real good games too. Like even in like we were high school, like I, I still feel like the NES was still kind of relevant. You know, at least a little bit. It's still relevant today. Yeah. It absolutely is. I, I just played a new game the other week. Yeah, we just little played Samson. Little Samson. I never awesome. played it. Licky. <laughs> little Lickle. Samson. Oh, yeah. Little Lickle. Lickle. So that's what we said, but how about you guys in the Discord? Because we love our Discord. So, uh, Lobaka says Adventure on the Atari 2600. Oh, no. I haven't beaten that. Of course, that game didn't have credits, but he he's definitely an OG for beating that game. Yeah. Because it, like that, that was cryptic as all get out. <laughs> yeah, it was. That's the game with like the the dragons, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, like yeah. stuff that like and you, you had you... keys and whatnot you had to find and yeah, it's got this like strange inventory system where you can only pick up like a certain amount of items and you got to put stuff back, but you got to remember what screen you left it on and there's like bats that take your stuff and yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. It's uh, fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. I remember playing that as a kid as well. Denko Misty says, I think the first game I ever beat myself was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. She participated in a lot of co-op or cried for help with bosses uh, that ended in credits before that. But I think that was my first ever solo win, she says. That's a good that game. A that's a respectable title to start your, uh, start your solo win streak, I think. Yeah. I remember being so excited when I first got Adult Link as a kid, too. 
Like, yeah, I, and the game got scarier. Yeah, I remember <laughs> like you know running upstairs telling my sister that like I'm adult Link now. I'm adult Link. Like it was just like a I don't know why it was like a big achievement when you were a kid. Well, when that game first came out, where we were, it was like I think we were like fourth grade. Four, uh, the three of us, four, fifth, yeah, something like and that. Yeah. Jabba Jabba's belly was actually kind of confusing to me at that stage in my life because it was so like maze like, and you didn't know exactly where the things dropped you at, and like it was pretty tough um, when it first came out for my my age. Anyway, I mean, now I could probably beat that game blindfolded if I practiced. <laughs> I still haven't beat Ocarina of Time, so cheers to you, oh, man. <laughs> Slacker. We gotta get him on the uh, the Zelda train. I just I just don't like Zelda. <laughs> I try, I try. I just I just don't like it. It's a good game. Take. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a good game. I'm the problem. <laughs> Lysianthia says Mega Man X might be a contender for his for his first credit role. Man of culture. I could see that. I could see that. We all we all that that actually could have happened to any of us really if we were uh, if we were SNES households. Oh yeah. A darn good game. Yeah, I didn't have one. I had the Genesis. I got a SNES later in, like, high school. Wingard says, I can't say I remember for sure, but the first game was likely either Mega Man X or Final Fantasy VI. Wingard, I call BS you did not beat <laughs> Final Fantasy VI when you were, like, <laughs> you were, like, five or six years old. Yeah. Oh, he's a smart dude. He, he, like, Maybe. He was, yeah. Yeah. Sure. His family all played those games. Yeah. Tom, Ryan, his mom, even, they all played Final Fantasy, so it wouldn't be that far out of the realm. Find it such a suspect entry. <laughs> he needs to come on the show and defend himself. I believe you, but I'm watching you. I'm watching you. We had another question of the week, too. Uh, this one's a little bit more relevant to the game. And who actually pitched, pitched this one? Do you guys know? Oh, this one, this one was Danko Misty's uh, oh, question. Great. So... This question from Danko Misty. Favorite insta-kill move in Melee? Yeah. Because they had those then. Now, in the new Smash, you just have moves that hit really hard. Yeah. Not necessarily. Well, I don't know. They, they they still have a couple, right? Like, doesn't, like, the hero have, like, the big bang shot or something yeah. like that? Yeah. I think Roy has always had his, too. Well, the games yeah. that he was in. Um, with, like, the fully charged uh, special move. Oh, yeah. Ike's, Ike's, I think, does, too. If you fully charge it and hit, manage to hit something with it. Yeah. <laughs> Warlock Punch is a close one. I don't think it's quite yeah. an instant kill, but it's it's close. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot. Not, there's only one insta-kill move that I can think of at 0%, and that's Roy's up beyond Jigglypuff. Yeah, I think you, gotta, you have to, like, reverse it or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Wouldn't, like, Roy's, like, big... Uh, just regular special attack, the one that you charge, isn't that like an automatic kill if you hit with it at full strength? It, I don't think it's instant kill. You could DI out of it. That, huh. yeah, too. And I think... <clears throat> it, it, I, I know a lot of people don't play with items, but like I'm trying to think, like if you had like the metal power up, too, that would probably hamper it pretty bad. The home run bat definitely kills if you yeah. get hit with it. Yeah, yeah. Like, you you, you don't live that. Not unless you're <laughs> in the, the pit of... Um... <laughs> Of uh, oh, Hyrule, Hyrule, Hyrule Temple. yeah, Hyrule yeah. Temple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad we didn't play any games there. I this, know this, this week, come to think of it, <laughs> there's time uh, in the future. I, there's always time, time marches on. <laughs> um, the uh, I think my favorite instant kill move, put it in quotes, uh, I think is uh, Luigi's Taunt. When they're on the edge, <laughs> yeah, and you taunt, and he does his little kick and kicks their feet, and it like spikes them down. Oh where it yeah, feels. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that one too. It's a good one. It's just all these strange little things they stuck into this game that are that are like that. Um, and here are some of the Discord's favorites. Uh, Danko Misty's partial to the lightning kick from Zelda. Yeah, that's a strong one. I in the same vein, I like the knee. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm more partial to the knee, but like yeah, the, the lightning Falcon's kick is knee. good too. Just because Captain Falcon's movements are so exaggerated, I just yeah. love Yeah. There's nothing <laughs> like, you know, starting a run and then jumping across the whole battlefield and landing a knee. You know, it's just so great. It feels so good. Wingard pulls up the, the home run bat, says it's very satisfying. I would definitely agree. Especially with the sound effects that it makes too. <laughs> uh, Lysianthia says, you know, mine is Jigglypuff Rest, so dumb. So hard to hit, but so satisfying. Yep. I'm like a rollout rest. guy myself. 
Steve knows I'm a, I'm a pretty masterful at using the rollout. Uh, Hapney says DK's wind-up punch. Oh, giant punch, yeah. Mm, I feel like that's like a separate category of moves, right? Like there's, yeah. there's the charge move. Like Mewtwo right. has one, Samus has one. Steve I'll might know it. this. Um, what is stronger, DK's wind-up punch or warlock punch? Warlock uh, punch. I, I would say probably like percentage-wise, I would say that the warlock punch gets it. But the thing about the giant punch is that you can do it midair, whereas like the warlock punch is so slow, yeah, you can't. So like, based on what you're doing, DK can throw you up in the air and hit you with giant punch and kill you. So I mean, if it depends on which metric you're asking about, but I think that uh, the warlock's punch will send further at lower percentages. Yeah, no, I think I think warlock punch is a bigger reward, but <laughs> it's a worse yeah. move objectively. Yeah, right. Uh, of course, Tom gives the classic Falcon Punch. The original. <laughs> yep. From 64. That was the... Well, Jigglypuff have rest in 64? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember discovering that. I was like, oh, <laughs> what, is, what happened? Like, I remember seeing <laughs> just the, main. like, just the, like, down B. And, like, it being just Jigglypuff falling asleep. I was like, man, they went out of their way to make this character a joke character. Yeah. Today. This character's like, got two taunts. <laughs> No, no upbeat recovery and down this this down fall asleep thing, huh? Sweet. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah. Those those are all the responses. Awesome. That's what we have. Keep them coming, guys. Yeah, I know these were these were great questions. I always think it's fun when when we have multiple questions. So yeah, go ahead and write in. Uh, either write in in the Discord or uh, write us in at the Cable Club podcast at gmail.com to get your questions answered men you ready to smash so super smash brothers melee is a it's a semi type fighting game it's like fighting and platforming um we call it brawler i'm not exactly sure what everybody else calls it but one of the cool parts about it is that not only is it a horizontal fighting game like you would expect on Street Fighter or, um, you know, Mortal Kombat or whatever, but it also takes in consideration vertical space, too, a lot more heavily than the other games. So it's kind of like a platformer in that way. It was released in 2002 on the Nintendo GameCube uh, by HAL Laboratories and oh, Nintendo. Oh, one. Oh, one, baby. 2001? Oh, one, baby. Okay. I stand corrected. 2001. Uh, director was Masahiro Sakurai, and he's made all of the Smash games, and he's pretty popular online. Everybody knows him. like to meme on him a bit. Yeah. Um, in this game, there's a really special interaction when you fight. So normally, in a fighting game, you have a health bar. But in Smash Brothers, when you hit somebody, they gain what you would call percentage. And the higher the percentage, the further you fly outwards. Um, based on the certain attacks. When you get sent too far and you can't make it back to stage, or you fly out of bounds, you'll lose a stock, which is essentially a life. So the goal of the game, when playing against other people, is to knock them far enough out so that you can either intercept their recovery or knock them out for, far enough to lose a stock. Once you reach zero stocks, you lose. The game has all sorts of other modes that we'll talk about, but uh, that's like just to get your head around the main idea of the gameplay. And the last thing that I really wanted to point out is that this game is littered with all kinds of Nintendo IPs. You have Mario, Zelda, Link, Pokemon, Star Fox, Metroid. Like all those franchises are represented in this. Yeah, huge um, crossover. Yeah. It's so great. It's a big fighting game that's a little bit more advanced in my opinion than the traditional fighter but it has all your favorite nintendo characters does yeah and i can't speak to the size of the community necessarily for smash brothers in general my impression is it's big but i also as a video game player have a very close proximity to it so i don't know where it ranks in like the fighting game you know uh communities like you know against like mortal Kombat or street fighter or like marvel versus capcom like i don't know what's bigger but to me like the smash brothers following is is enormous yeah it really it is. is it is a phenomenon 
and it was like the only show in town for this type of game. That's why we have a hard time classifying it. Cause like, I think nowadays they call them brawlers. There are some other ones like, uh, I think it's called multiverse or metaverse where it's like a Warner multiverse. brothers type of thing with like Scooby-Doo characters and DC characters. There's a Nickelodeon one. I forget what that one's called. Right. And it's all kind of the same thing. Most fighting games, when you start fighting, you knock health down. But in this game, your health is a zero percentage. And then as you get hit, you get more and more higher percentage damaged. And the higher percentage damaged you are, the further you get sent flying. And the only way you die is by going up, left, right, down, out of bounds. And your character, like, explodes. Yeah. Which, as a kid playing the first Smash Brothers game, I thought was the funniest thing. I used to, like, crack up in <laughs> tears laughing at, like, Luigi, like, exploding and going, oh. <laughs> like, it's also like, very know, satisfying, too. Yeah. Like, I don't know where they got this idea because it took years for other companies to replicate a game like this. Yeah. Like, the, these other brawlers that I'm, that I'm talking about are, like, a recent thing. Like, this was the only game that combined this, like, platforming fighting game, you know, like spatial thing it's incredible yeah, yeah i think in the ps3 era they came out with playstation all-stars yeah. which was a big flop yeah it was and i think the first like semi-successful like indie version of a brawler was called brawlhalla and um it's, it didn't do super well right. but there's, a, there's another had one too i think that was kind of in that time frame like aether like rise of oh, aether a- or something yeah i th- i remember but I don't know about you guys, but, like, I really don't think, like, all these other companies that are, like, you know, trying to, like, copy the formula, they just don't do it just as good as Smash. Like, Smash has, like, perfected the formula. Well, Nintendo spent a good amount of time, even before the first game, building up these beloved characters with these epic adventures on the, you know, on the on the Super Nintendo and on, on the N64, right? Like, you think about the games that came out before the first Smash Brothers, right? Greats like Super Mario World, Mario 64, Super Metroid, Star yep. Fox, right? Like uh, like all of these games that people already thought were bonkers good. And they're like, let's just make all these characters fight. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it like, was a people, yeah, people idea. Originally, it wasn't going to be that, though. I think it was called like King of Fighters or something before, like it, in its initial development before it came out as Super Smash Brothers. Uh, Sakurai was working on a game like that. And I think, I think that it was Shigeru Miyamoto who said, make it Nintendo characters. Yeah, that was an excellent choice. Yeah, I think I, it was him. <laughs> you guys, you guys remember the commercial? Oh, uh, yeah. it's like, I do. You when, and me, yeah. no matter how we toss the dice. I know, I know we're really supposed costume. to be talking about Melee, but like this, this, is, this yeah. is the intro to the world, right? right. Like, and, then, and you had like Donkey Kong and Yoshi and Mario all like. Yeah, they're all awkward and, and holding each other. And then, like, Yoshi throws a kick to Pikachu's, like, leg and just takes him out. And then they all, like, Donkey Kong just lays into Pikachu and Mario drop kicks Donkey Kong. And they're all, like, they're all people in these big, fluffy, big suits, like, yeah. fat suit costumes, yeah. right? So they're just people wrestling in the grass. It's just... Oh, I gotta see that commercial again. It's been so I remember long. being so excited, like, for that, for that game to come out after seeing that commercial. And then, like, Melee took it up like cranked up so many dials on that same formula because like the first game was just like just uh an arcade mode and fights right there were some like small mini games right but like melee just took it to a whole different level yeah and i'm surprised like considering like going from you know the original smash to melee like that it was such a small time frame that you know the, the, the games came out and they just hit it out of the park with melee you know, sometimes you're, like, kind of, like, worried when a game comes out, like, soon after, like, another, like, a sequel. You're like, oh, they, they, this might be rushed. And, uh, no, they, it was phenomenal. They did a great job. It kind of reminds me of uh, Mega Man 2, where, like, uh, you know, Mega Man was kind of, like, eh, it was, like, kind of floppy, I guess. And then they, like, made Mega Man 2, and it was it was great. <laughs> yeah, except, you know, in this, in this um, example, you know, Mega Man was made on the same exact engine as Mega Man 2. Melee, like a whole new engine yep. and like brand new everything. A whole new everything. system. A whole right. new system. Like and, it, it was, uh, they, it was they two kept, years later. They kept all of the the fun and excitement, but they added like smooth fluidity and more characters and and like more systems, better uh, better. Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Physics. Like the game just felt incredible. Like, like Smash 64, if you weren't really good and you don't Z cancel, and you don't do any of that, it feels blocky and rigid. But I remember first picking up Melee and being like, wow, this is smooth. Yeah, the yep. pace of the fights got much faster. Yeah, they did. Actually, funny story. I played so much of this game. And I played it, like, with Steve pretty much, like, from the day I met Steve, like, <laughs> in my in my tween years. And we played and practiced so much that, like... I was able to clean house like throughout our, <laughs> our our high school, except for fighting Steve. Like it was like how it how 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 it was, and that carried like all the way through college. Yeah, yeah, it was good times. Like I remember high school days, everyone was playing. Like in the cafeteria, we had a CRT set up, you know, GameCube on that Melee. big wheelie cart. Oh like, yeah, CRTs. I don't Dude. even know where these things were kept, but like somehow <laughs> the student body got a hold of every wheelie cart with a TV in the whole school and we brought it to the cafeteria for this Iron Gamer tournament stuff. Yeah, it was great. Or like during during like midterms and stuff when you when you didn't actually have classes, you just had like the exam and then nothing for the rest of the day. You'd all be in the cafeteria just jamming games of Smash. <laughs> I remember yeah. uh, we would do it in study halls too, and you guys were like in the, the same study hall classroom, and and I wasn't, so I would like go to your guys' study hall room, and I, I I swear to God I did this for like weeks and it was fine, but then there was one day where like I. The teacher came and got me and be like, You're, this isn't your study hall room. So I got pulled out. <laughs> but I want to smash with my friends. <laughs> that was a sad day. I remember when uh, we were playing in in uh, that same study hall and word had been getting out about me. And some of the upperclassmen came. Um what was his name? Uh, Matt. And he ended up playing me thinking he was so good, and I beat him. And then he went and got his friend to come, and I beat him, too. It was just, <laughs> like, the fun of Smash, man. You just play it and play it and play it, and you get better and better, and you feel those improvements. Just, man, there's not, not many feelings like that. Yeah. I just, for me, like, regular fighting games, they just never, like, clicked as much as Smash for me. Like you said, when you get better, you feel it. And um, I don't know, with, like, the 2D fighters, I know you can you can get better and whatnot, but, like, I, just for me, it, the, the progression from Smash was just so rewarding. And I was up there with you, too, like, skill-wise. I wouldn't say I was on your guys' level, but I was just right under you guys. It was probably because I played Fox, but... <laughs> Steve was a cruel teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got my skills from just losing. Steve, Steve did not teach me how to win. <laughs> hey, that's the best way to learn experience, you just man. Stay alive. You're like, oh, how do you win? Don't get hit. Don't get a hit. If Steve can't hit me, nobody can hit me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Back then, I worry about. Yeah, uh, and and you know, like I think part of it was like our town, obviously, like our school had a fetish for this game for sure. But, um, but like back in the day, there were only so many games. Like now I feel like there are so many games. Like it's not oh, even yeah. likely yeah. that even the three of us who hang out all the time have played the same set of games these days. Right. And there's so many different games with so many different tastes in mind and, you know, but back then, like, you had two kinds of games. You had good games and bad games, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah. And much. everybody knew the good ones, and everybody played the, the 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 good ones. You know, they were hidden gems, but we found all those later. Like, right. You know, I ran into exactly zero people through my childhood that ever even mentioned Little Samson to me. <laughs> I, <laughs> Not I didn't even know what it was until you said it. <laughs> Little who? But, like, you know, so it was like you'd meet somebody who you knew was interested in video games you'd get to talking to them you'd ask them if they played smash and the answer would always be yes like and they had enough familiarity like with with the game to get in a line because we had a line yeah like for smash to get in a group of four and play and feel like they feel like they could win right, right. like like it wasn't like having a passing familiarity oh yeah i play this game but i suck at it no it was like everybody played this game in our school yeah. yeah, we had a gamer club every Tuesday, and I stayed and almost exclusively played Smash the whole, like, three hours or whatever. Just playing against everybody that I could, trying to get as much experience against all of the characters, and just 
having fun with it, you know, trying out characters that I didn't really play. And um, it was, it was really a cultural thing in our school. Yeah. And like, I want to say as far as like the, the, how the game is aged, I want to talk about that for, for a second. Like, I do think that smash ultimate is probably the best smash game ever made. But like for me, I never, and, and I played a good amount of smash ultimate, but I've never had as much fun with a, with a super smash game as, as I had with melee. Like, yeah, I would have to agree, but I think it's just, be, it's probably because of like the community that we had. It's such a strong driving factor, you know, it's just like, it kind of reminded me of like battle network back in the day too, where it's just like, you always just strive to get better and better and better. Cause you wanted to, you know, beat your friends. And it was just, it was just so good. But even that had like a niche, right? Like there was the battle network group, right? And there yeah. was the magic, the gathering group and the Yu-Gi-Oh group. Right. But smash was the ambiguous like middle ground the band nerds played it the magic <laughs> nerds played it the math club played it we all played smash yeah <laughs> and it's just so interesting to learn who people's mains were like i feel like that said something about you back in the day <laughs> you're like oh yeah. this guy's this guy's technical as all get out he's a samus main you gotta watch out for him he's shifty he's tricky like you know <laughs> yeah yeah or you're like oh this guy's a game and watch me uh, main he's a loose cannon you don't know where he's gonna be at <laughs> I have no idea what he's gonna pull out. He plays Marth. He just likes to hit forward smash. Yeah. <laughs> plays Marth. He's either he either knows exactly what he's doing or he's a he's a beginner. <laughs> yeah, I've always gravitated towards like the faster characters. Like I've I've always I'm a Fox main through and through from every Smash game to date. And um he was broken in this game. Like even before like tier list was even a thing. Like, I just remember his, like, up smash and up air being so ridiculously strong that I was just like, I like this character. And he cooks. He can get, like, across the screen really fast. Yeah. Well, like, you know, back then, it's like a, a lot of our moveset involved the C-stick because, you know, you know, we're young kids trying, you know, we weren't, like, super, super technical, you know, especially in, like, today's world where everyone's, like, crazy. So, like, the, we relied on the C-Stick a lot, and his up smash was insane. Like, it would kill a lot of characters under 100%, and I, and he was fast. So, that, that's why, I, like, I, I loved him so much. And it's just, ever since then, it's just, he's always been my main. Yeah. Um, just for anybody that doesn't know the terminology, which is probably very few of you, uh, in Smash, when you hit um, a direction and your A button at the same time, you get a chargeable attack that gets stronger the longer you charge it. And they're stronger than your regular attacks, like your air attacks or your specials. Yeah. Usually, it's by good actually margin. Called, it's actually called a smash attack. Like, yeah, right. and it that, is yeah, called a smash attack. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, so we're saying C sticking. So on the GameCube controller, it had two two sticks. If anybody remembers, because really it, it had one stick for most games. Uh, but the C stick is this little yellow nub that. Uh, <laughs> yep has a complex sitting next to that big thick other stick but um <laughs> basically if you if you flick that thing in any direction uh it sets off one of these smash moves faster than you could just like do it yourself without charging right basically. yeah at its weakest point yeah and even then it was still pretty powerful you know i, I think, think if you hold z and hit the c stick at the same time then you can charge oh really oh I interesting i never knew that and then but but also it has a secondary use of attacking in the direction you flick it. So in Smash, if you're in the air, or even if you're on the ground, frankly, if you're hitting up, down, left, or right, you're going to do a different attack than you would if just by standing there and pressing pressing the attack button, right? So if you're in air and you want to attack downward, you need to push your control stick down and attack downward. But what that would do is it would send your character midair downward while also attacking and if you wanted to attack down but still be rising in trajectory from the platform you would need to see stick downward to also do that right and there's multiple reasons you could do that we could talk about this all day yeah <laughs> without like getting certain... too technical every character has close to like 12 moves but based on the directions you do and you know neutral aerials and then you know throws and yeah, yeah. smashes it's smash, a lot of different it? moves but uh it, but there's one of the things that I want to point out is that there's not like traditional combos like Hadouken, right? You don't do semicircle, you know, weak punch or whatever it is to do a Hadouken in this game. It's really simple. 
in it's this static. game to do an attack. Yep. Every character has the same exact like button inputs, but um, obviously different moves come out if you're a different character. So like for example, like if you're Samus and you press forward special, a missile would come out. You know, or if you were say Fox, if you did the same thing, you would do like this like illusionary dash where he'd turn translucent and like go through the enemy and you know damage them that way. Yeah, and like all of these big flashy moves that you would associate in a normal fighting game with being like special moves that you needed like special inputs like Hadouken, like like Steve said, they were all handled by the B button. The B button was your specials button. Yeah. But the specials for most characters serve a dual purpose. Like one is obviously you can use them and they're damaging moves and they, you know, can feed into your combos and whatever. Um, but uh, a lot of them are related to getting back on the stage. So most of the stages are platforms floating in space of some sort and you get knocked off like all the time. Like if you don't know how to get back on the stage, you're not going to win in this game. At yeah. All. Like it's not like a normal fighter where you get knocked down and your character gets gets back up. Like you have to get back onto wherever you were. Yeah. And that um, was a huge aspect of the game too. Like recovering. Um, you actually had to be pretty good at it because obviously getting back to the stage is one thing, but you also had to be skillful enough to get back to the stage without getting hit by the opponent trying to end your stock. Not only did you have to develop good offensive game, but defense was just as good too. Like you you really had to learn the in and outs of this game to be really, really good. And like there's other aspects of it too that make it more approachable. Like we were a very strict like four stocks lives, uh, no items, you know, crowd. We thought we were meta as all get out, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh but like there there's like a whole item aspect to the game that that throws more of these crossover elements in like for instance you might like if you turn items on you might be like an, an item might fall out of the sky for you to grab and uh use against your your opponents it might be like a bomb from mario for instance yeah or yeah. like a star from mario might come down and make you make you invincible or a like, pokeball yep. releases like a random pokemon like so <laughs> It's like yeah. a whole other party game element to this. Yeah, and that's like the quote-unquote intentional way to play, but like a lot of people liked it to play this game competitively because it was just uh, so fun to play it like that too. That was the, I'm playing with my cousin's mode and I'm going to put him on a team and give him a chance. Well, yeah, too. Like, you know, believe it or not, like skill gaps as concerned, like it kind of lessened that because like a lot of those items, like it was so random that like you could actually pull off a win that you had no right winning just because the of the hammer. Items. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, I think it was, uh, I know we're not talking about this one either, but like super smash brothers brawl, there was like a brief period where tournaments, uh, used items oh my and like God. Sonic was really high tier because he was very, <laughs> even though he's not a good character in that game, he was very fast and he could grab, uh, items quicker. Like, yeah. he could get to them way before Yikes. anybody else did. So he became, like, meta in that mode. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Sounds Just, awful. But, guys, like, we've all played this game a ton. You guys must have some personal stories about this. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I got I, I got one that I can think of at the top of my head. I remember, like, I was with my father at, like, some fair. I don't remember the fair. But, like, out of the blue, like, we had fun and whatnot. And then, we, you know, we're walking back to the car. And, you know, he's like, you want to go to Walmart or I think it was Walmart. I'm not really sure of the store, but like out of the blue, he decided to buy me a GameCube and um, Super Smash Brothers Melee was the very first game that I've ever owned on the GameCube. And I remember bringing that sucker home, hooking it up and then just playing it for hours. Like I remember like playing um, the adventure mode, having so much fun with that, um, playing um Events, events, yeah, that's what it was. Where you... Oh, like the like the home run contest and the board, the platform, no, like, oh, like, like fight Sen giant Bowser as Mario. Yeah, and scenarios, then... I guess, like event scenarios. Oh, yeah, I forgot those were a thing. I remember yeah. going through those. I remember getting stuck on one, like a specifically. It was like with Ness and coins. It, Collect three hundred coins. I I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember being Ness, and I just remember just I could not get by for the longest time. I think I almost like broke down and cried at one point, but like I muscled through. <laughs> but like man, I had so much fun playing that. Like I had no one to play with with at the time until I met you guys. I was like in like Troy, New Hampshire, or something, and then I moved closer to you guys like shortly after that. But like even still, just by myself or with my sister, I guess, like we were we had so much fun playing this game.
could be because I spent like most of my life losing to Steve in Melee that I remember when Steve and I first met over Smash, it was Smash 64. I remember Steve came over like I think uh, uh, our, our friend Matt, because he and I were hanging out a lot then. He's like, oh, I got to bring my friend Steve over. He's really good at Smash. <laughs> and then I remember he and I being like evenly matched, I think maybe even slightly tilted in my favor. And I remember this look. He was like, oh, fellow chucker, eh? Like kind of a little... yeah cowabunga well, it is well i have this for some reason i have like this little different story with steve I, I remember him like not being that great and like i don't know like over the summer he like turned super saiyan and like bodied everyone because i remember there was a point where he was like kind of okay but not the, anything amazing and then I, I i think it was like over the summer he just like amped it up and he just 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 started destroying everybody. He went in the hyperbolic time yeah. chamber of Smash. I, I, I remember that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I wasn't the best at Smash 64. Um, and Melee came out, and I didn't own it for a while. Our friend uh, Corey, he would ride his bike like five miles to my house uh, during the summer, and we would play all day, and I didn't own the game. But eventually, I got the game. And once I did... That's when progress really started happening because <laughs> I would play it nonstop. Yeah, it unlocked. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's around the time that I picked my main at the time was Ganondorf, and I just started like practicing and watching people online play. Um, there were a lot of fun uh, Ganondorfs. Like uh, I remember old school, it was like Linguini was his name, and he was a really good Ganondorf player. Um, I'd watch him a lot. And uh, Thomas Tipman was also a really good Ganondorf player when the game was new, and I watched him a lot. So I learned a lot of stuff from watching online yeah, so before you were doing YouTube that was stuff. even a thing. Yeah, you were doing that stuff when nobody was. That's why you leveled up like a beast. <laughs> yeah, easily flew flew past all of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually want to talk about the other game modes for, for a second. I want to get to my personal story, but like just because... So like you guys have mentioned these challenges thing twice. I'm just learning about it now. Like I oh. didn't own this game. So I like I knew about Adventure because my aunt owned the game and I got to play it once in a while while I was babysitting one of my cousins, but like I didn't even know these challenges existed until just now. You yeah. don't remember at all the the event that you have to fight Giga Bowser, Ganondorf, and Mewtwo? Yeah, that was no. like the last on one. On Final Destination. Yeah, that's like the last one, isn't it? Yeah, it's how you unlock Final Destination. Yeah. No, because I didn't, well, you know, like I said, I didn't have the game one one player. So, like, any time I ever played it was on somebody else's file. They would have Final D unlocked. Like, like I think I vaguely remember the fight, but I don't, I didn't, I didn't, like, know it was, like, a thing, like, after a series of challenges. Yeah, there's 51 like, of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's crazy, given the amount of hours that I've put into this game. <laughs> after the episode, everybody should go watch the speedrun of the 51 events. It's pretty fun. <laughs> That's, I, it's got to be ridiculous, I'm sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we should post that in the Discord. That'll be interesting. All right, you guys want me to tell my story? Yeah. All right, Bring I think on. my story might also be one of Steve's most most fun stories because I had started college, and Steve was living with me in, in, in an apartment. So basically it was class, and then every other waking hour that we weren't working part-time at a local pizza hut, it was just Smash Brothers, like, all the time. We were so <laughs> obsessed. We were, like, going around the neighboring towns. There's, like, this little town in New Hampshire called Keene. Actually, Keene was – Keene called itself a city. I don't think anybody except someone from there would agree that that municipality is a city. Very small. <laughs> and every town around it you wouldn't have heard of. Um, yeah, Troy is one of them, which where, where I live yeah. a little bit. <laughs> where? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I had yeah. actually never heard of it, even though even though we were, we were around there. Um, yeah. But, like, uh, we would go looking for other people to play Smash with. Like, like there was, like, a local game store. There was a comic store. Like, we invited other people over to play Smash with. Like, we got into it. Like, we were the keen scene. Um, and then Super Smash Brothers Brawl was announced for the Wii, right? And then there was, like, a month early, like, a contest that GameStop was holding at local shops to give out one, <laughs> one copy of Brawl to a melee tournament winner and boy did we take that day off of work real fast like, 
<laughs> and we practiced, practiced, practiced. We we practiced for hours. It was just like click, 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 like like just constant. Like we we would turn the TV volume down to concentrate harder, and it was just like just the sound of clicking controllers like all day long. So we go to this tournament. We are over prepared. <laughs> like so, it's like a bunch of. It's like us college kids. There's a couple other college kids there. We actually recognized one because we went to a college game night and we fought a bunch of people over there and cleaned house over there first um, to, to practice for this. <laughs> and and like I remember walking in and like two of them saw us, two of them that were at the previous tournament, and they just like the look on their face was like, oh, <laughs> like oh, uh, no. not leaving with this because because we saw them. They were having a good old time, and then they watched us walk in like it was some kind of saloon. And we kicked <laughs> those swinging doors open. They're like, oh, fun's over. And like I don't know how we got so lucky. I ended up on one side of the bracket. Steve ended up on the exact opposite. <laughs> and, and we tore our way through those brackets and fought each other in the finals. Uh, <laughs> But on the way there, so Smash being as hype as it was, we've already been talking about it, right? So there's teams of people who showed up there with all their friends. I remember this, my first opponent, right? And I was a Jigglypuff main, which was nothing to think of at the time, right? So I go up, I pick my character, and here comes my my opponent going by Captain Cole, right? Because I guess you could name yourself whatever you want in the tournament. I don't even know. Did I name myself just Don? Probably Phantom or Don. Yeah, I don't know. I think so anyway. So his friends, as he's coming up, are like, Captain Cole, Captain Cole, Captain Cole. He picks Link. We end up on Battlefield. No, I... it was Super Mario Brothers 2. What do you mean? The stage, Super Mario Brothers 2, with the two waterfalls. Was it? Yeah, he was standing in the center. I, I could have sworn it was Battlefield. Anyway. <laughs> I remember. 20 plus years ago. <laughs> yeah. Long, long long time ago now but like uh so he picks link i take the first three stocks on it off him before like before he starts to really deal me damage <laughs> where's Captain his Cole cheering now? squad his <laughs> cheering squad went like cheering through like the first stock and then halfway through the second stock and stopped <laughs> and then like his last stock he actually got me um all all he did was just hit the uh up b links like swirling attack over and over again for the entirety of his last life and he just got me with like the edge of it the first time or second time or whatever and I ended up dying. I came back the second life and just like ripped him apart <laughs> like, <the> last <laughs> life and, I, and then I, I remember Steve going Don 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 <laughs> the cheering squad had stopped oh my god <laughs> and it's not fair he was like he was definitely younger than me I felt <laughs> A little bad, but I wanted that copy of Brawl really bad. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're going to get it early. Like, that's that's a, a nice month prize. Early, dude. Yeah. A month early, dude. And for free. Look, man, the fans are coming out. Like, that's it. It was a good lesson. <laughs> that was, that's, uh, was a good day. was a good day. <laughs> Captain Cole, if you're listening, don't worry. We haven't forgotten you. <laughs> and we appreciate your view. And your generosity. Uh, so, for me, um, one of my favorite memories of the game wasn't really um anything too crazy uh but in sophomore year we had this thing called the passion project and you had to do a presentation on it and i picked melee and i did it with my friend mike um and because he was in the the class with me and uh you know we got to do a whole PowerPoint presentation on it. We got to, you know, talk about the game for a little bit. And then you got like, I don't know, two minutes that you could play it. And I remember being in the big auditorium and they had it on the projector screen and it was so big, the biggest screen I've ever played Melee on. <laughs> and uh, the funny part was that, you know, in this game you could save your tags, like your nicknames. And people had all kinds of crazy, oh, vile, boy. like, swear <laughs> words and everything. Amazing and, what you could do with those four, what was it, like four letters? Yeah, like yeah. Four or five yeah. letters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're scrolling through to pick our tags, and you see all kinds of swear words and <laughs> just the worst things. And I can only imagine what the teachers are thinking reading that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you had to scroll past to find your name, and you yeah. just be like, 
<laughs> like you know somebody ass. had put <laughs> like, yeah the f bomb in there and you know just the C just, bomb. just the f bomb c yeah. like f u c k like that's that's my name in this game <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was just really cool to be able to play it like on the giant projector in an auditorium you know i never really got uh like insane with going to the tournaments and playing like on those i i practiced by myself um, you know, advanced text, wave dash, L cancel, all that that stuff that like competitive stuff. But uh that was the biggest screen I had ever played it on and it was like it was just really exciting. I won all of the the game the Iron Man tournaments that we did at school in Smash and you know I ended up playing Dawn in the finals in that uh in that tournament. But it was really cool because Don didn't say this part, but we got to play Brawl early. The final match, or the final best of three, was on Brawl. Oh, wow. That's exciting. And Don oh, picked Meta Knight. I, I, had, I had forgotten. I thought we Puffles Ganondorfed it to the end. <laughs> and, uh, no, it was... Um, the first two were in Melee, and then they said, for the final, or whatever, it's going to be in Brawl. And we got to play Brawl. And you picked Meta Knight... And I think I picked maybe Link. I can't remember. I don't but remember who won that. In, me. In, 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 <laughs> in Brawl? You won it? Yes. Okay. We played on, I think, um, the Pikmin level. That's a really good memory. I don't remember the name of the stage, but it's the one where there's the leaf in the middle, and then you have the slant on the left, and the water comes down, and there's one of those dog things. Yeah, I, I know what stage <laughs> you're talking about. Yeah. Um, the Grub Dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just so he many like, good memories. He'd like clamp down on your characters and drag them out of bounds, and they'd explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I actually want to talk about the stages a little bit too. So, like, I'm not really an an item guy. I'm not that filthy casual, but like, uh, like I think the flat tournament worthy stages get boring after a while. So, like, there are so th there's a lot of stages in this game. What are there like forty in? In, in melee, something like that. Yeah, it's I close. I think, yeah, it's the, close to that. Yeah. 35 to 40. So, like, we mentioned how these games are kind of platformers, but they have, like, not only the characters inspired by various games, but they have the levels inspired by various Nintendo games. And some of them are more platform e than others, right? Yeah, so, like, uh, a lot. so Final Destination, which we keep talking about, is, like, just a flat stage floating in space. That's it. Right. But other stages like uh, Pokemon Stadium, which is also a tournament legal stage, uh, it changes like it's it starts out as a flat platform, but then it has like other platforms that pop up. It has like a mountain that pops up, or it turns into like a like a water stage or something like that, right? Like there's all this different stage mechanics going on, and then there's the the most difficult category of things like um like big blue yeah where you're like literally fighting on top of an f0 race <laughs> yeah like, and, and if you Falcon or whatever yeah if you fall on the on the road you just get like sucked back because you are on the moving vehicles <laughs> like and it's just like this extra mechanic that you have to platform your way across all these cars and try to kill yeah. each other if you got hit and you didn't tech the road which teching means is like if right before you hit the ground, you have a chance to hit the a button so you can catch your fall. Um, if you didn't tech, you like just bounced off the ground and then you you just lay there. If you did that on the road, you were dead, like <laughs> because you were like Don said, it was so fast you'd get sucked under the cars and you were gone. <laughs> but like I just love those levels. Like like once we've had a few matches on the on the on, on the tournament legal levels, I love to move to those stages. Oh yeah, like, Pokey floats like, is another one. There's another yeah. crazy one. And yeah. Pokemon floats where like you're up in the air, and you're like fighting on giant balloon Pokemon yeah. that are like popping out of all directions and soaring across. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite a cinematic um, game. Like I can't think of another fighting stage in any like fighting game that is like that cinematic and out there. Yeah, there's Rainbow Ride as well. Yep, Rainbow Ride. Which on one the... is that one? That, you're the, on the ship. Rainbow Ride is like the yeah the the ship, the so, floating Super ship. Mario sixty four. Oh, oh my God! I forgot about that one. It's... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's also um, uh, Mute City, where you travel around Mute City and the platform lands, and there's all kinds of different roadways and. Yeah, you can actually get hit by the cars on that one. <laughs> and there's no ledge in that stage. 
Yeah, no, it just goes over to the side. So if you end up fighting over there near the boundary, you can just like grab your opponent, huck them over the just like just over the border, and they and they and they die. Yeah, it's hilarious. I like um, all those stages too. It's, yeah, it's fun. They are again another way you equalize when you're playing with the cousins, right? Like you make them fight you on those stages. Yeah. And then all the music in the game, too, from all, like, the various games that, you know, that it came with. Like, you know, just being able to, like, listen to, like, Pokemon music or, like, you know, Legend of Zelda. You know, some of it was, like, the, the original music and some of it was, like, uh, remixes. It was it was just so good. Full-on like, yeah, orchestrated, dude. Yeah. Like, like the, the Fountain of Dreams uh, version, uh, which is the Kirby song that you fight DDD to in... in uh, Kirby's Adventure in Dreamland from from the NES. Yeah, there's an orchestrated version of that. It's a masterpiece. With, like the drums and the cymbals and every like it just it sounds amazing. I love it. It's my favorite track in the entire game. Yeah, yeah. I love Mute City, like Big Blue. Um, I like fighting the metal multi man melee, where you get that theme is really good too. There's, there's the metal version of the battle. So it, it, it also has original music too, right? Yeah. Like there's Smash music. And there's like a metal theme of the of the battlefield stage too. Like it's yeah. so, good. so good. It really is. <laughs> well, if you're going to be spending thousands of hours playing it, then the music needs to be great. You, they just went hard though. Yeah. They were like, this this is our this is our masterpiece right here. You know? And I think that if it weren't for the work that they put into Melee, I don't think we would have... we would have the tradition of that of like getting a new smash game for every new console that 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 we have today right like i think that really cemented smash brothers place in the uh in the expected nintendo lineup you know melee for sure i mean the original was popular but melee was an explosion yeah yeah melee blew the doors open for sure and on a topic of music i think to this day um, as far as like the menu music goes, as soon as you hit start and you you hear the menu music playing, I still think Melee has the best one out of all the Smash games to this date. Um, you can fight <laughs> me on that, but like it, there's just nothing like the just like da, 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 da. <laughs> it's so good. Like even like later Smash games, like when you can actually like change the mu- the menu music, I always change it to that. It's just, I mean, part of it's probably nostalgia, but I just love that song. It's best menu music, man. It is. It's better than Brawl. Yeah, by it's far. One of those games where you're like you struggle to find something that's wrong with it, and then you play as Bowser. <laughs> I mean, but even that's fun. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, he's fun. He hits I had, hard. I had a lot of fun this week playing as. Uh, playing as bowser yeah so like fast forward to now i haven't touched melee in years like steve steve stayed on the melee scene um but like i i moved on like brawl brawl came out and i and i played brawl smash 4 came out yeah. i played smash 4, so did i you know and then smash ultimate came out i played that briefly and then decided i was too old to keep up with these kids these days so i officially <laughs> retired um but then uh you know steve weren't you like state champion in new hampshire or something uh, I was in the top five, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I played a lot of Marth at the time and a little bit of Falco and the trusty old Ganondorf that nobody was ever ready for. It's crazy, like, like how good some people are. Um, it just, I remember, like, you know, playing Smash 4 with one of our buddies, Matt, and we got really damn good. But, like, there was this dude that, like, the best in New Hampshire. He was just in a league of his own. And it's just crazy. Just like the, even though that you're really good, the, the, even then the, the gap can still be huge. Yeah. There's just these people you just can't touch. Yeah. Like, and this is like a whole separate step up and you just know there's more you have to level yeah. up. Before and you and get melee there. is no different, you know, like yeah. this is, you can be really damn good at the game, but this, like I said, there can still be a gap between you and that person. That's just like on another level. I would say as far as I'm aware, Melee has the highest ceiling because of its engine. Like I I would believe it. The APM that you can achieve in that game on top of all of the options that you have. APM stands for actions per minute. If anyone doesn't know what that means. It's the clickies. Um, Yeah, it's the amount of inputs you do per minute. 
And Melee has some janky stuff that people have discovered over the years that makes it a really, really high actions per minute competitive game compared to the other Smash games. So the ceiling is like incredibly high on top of everything else you have to worry about in the Smash game, vertical, horizontal, recovery, edge guarding, combos. Right. This has even more than that. They have these things called light cancels, which reduce your landing lag on aerial attacks. And then you have these things called wave dash, which you you slide across the stage and, and it just the actions per minute right. are are very, very high compared to the other games. When, and when... that wave dashing thing is like a precision thing. It's yeah. Not, it's not an easy thing to pull off, but the way that you see players do it, they just like go da 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 and they yeah. like wave dash across they, the they entire fly across stage. It. They make your like... character look so much faster when you master it. Yeah. And then, Steve, when you say light cancel, is, is that what Z-canceling is? Or is that something uh, different? It's the same, except in Smash 64, Z-canceling reduces your landing lag to zero. Whereas in melee, it's called light canceling, and it oh. reduces your landing lag in half. So if your aerial has like twenty eight frames and you L cancel, it's now fourteen frames. I got but you. But in sixty four, if your landing lag is twenty eight frames and you Z cancel, it's zero frames. Right. You can immediately start moving again. I just I thought it was called Z canceling in melee for some reason. Maybe maybe I just got that mixed up. No nope, L cancel. Oh, it's L cancel. That's what that's what it was. Yeah, light cancel, L cancel. Yeah. But yeah, what does Z stand for? Just zilch? <laughs> zilch cancel? <laughs> I guess. Zilch frames. Well, Z canceling was found first, <laughs> and light canceling is light because it's it's half of yeah. the landing lag, not all of it. <laughs> yeah, I thought it had to do with hitting hitting the L button. Yeah. You can do with the R button. <laughs> but it, but it's, yeah, it's like Steve said, like, trying to, like, play the game at, like, uh, the highest level. It's like you need to know all these, like, different mechanics and whatnot. All right, so to put it into perspective, like, if you just pick up and play the game... The game doesn't seem that crazy fast. When you master all these moves, the game is just on a whole different level. Like, you can make Ganondorf look, like, very fast. Like, faster than Fox. If, like, say, like, you're playing Fox and you're not doing any of that stuff, and then the Ganondorf is doing all that stuff, that Ganondorf is probably going to be faster. Like, it's, it's crazy once you learn all these mechanics that people have found over the years. Yeah, fast enough. It, there are some pretty good Ganondorfs in the competitive scene. Uh, even to this day. I mean, one of the cool things about this game is things are still getting discovered. Like, just recently, there has been a Donkey Kong player um, who has been rising the ranks and winning some tournaments, and everybody thought Donkey Kong wasn't viable. Yeah. But the game is like didn't 20 feel years this old. Week. Yeah. <laughs> that goes for a couple of characters, actually. Maybe not as recent as, like, DK, but, like, you got, like, Pikachu... You got Yoshi. like uh, Yoshi, yeah. Um, these these characters were considered not that great, like probably what ten years ago. Well, even Jigglypuff, when I was playing, was not you know when 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 we when we were all playing in high school, was not considered great until like one yeah, in our circle, one or two people came on the scene, you know, big time with it, and then it was like, oh, yep, need to readjust that, right? Yeah. I like when yeah. that happens, like when a low tier hero comes out of the woodworks and like. <laughs> like it makes people turn heads. Like, whoa, maybe this character isn't as bad as we thought. I, I just, oh, I, I love, go. I love stories like that. There's a, um, there's a player right now who mostly plays Fox because Fox is undisputed, like number one. But he has been making waves with Link. Oh like, yeah. He's been doing really well with Link. He beat top, one of the top ten players. His name's Kador, and he plays Marth. He beat him in a major in New York City with Link. Yeah, I mean, like it's just. The game is just evolving yeah. still, and it's so old, but what? it's crazy. I saw crazy. a task link, tool-assisted <laughs> link, and it's insane. Like, if if you could even be, like, half as good as, like, the, the tool-assisted link, he seems like a top-tier character. Like, he was doing, like, things like dropping the bomb, picking it up while, like... You know, yeah, so Z dropping, stun, yeah, stun locking the character with like uh, with the bombs. We literally couldn't do anything. Like, if you were half as good as that, you would be winning tournaments. I swear. <laughs> yeah. So you Z cancel, drop the bomb, wave dash down, grab the bomb after it hits the opponent, and it like gives them uh, hit stun, so they can't move. And you just like click, 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 and it's like wave shining. Yeah. It's just like I see that, and I was like, damn. Like if I saw like a link that that played close to that, like how do you beat that? 
<laughs> it's pretty fun. Yeah. The, the game ceiling is insane. Yeah. Which makes it, like, so much different than other fighting games where, like, you know, if you were to watch a Street Fighter tournament and you kind of just know what's going on, you're they're hitting people and they're doing the combos, right? But there isn't a ton of advanced stuff in the game. If you played Street Fighter, you can kind of see what they're doing in a way. But if you uh, play Smash and then you watch, and then you watch a professional game with Fox and Falco, you're going to be confused <laughs> about think, what's happening because they're moving so fast. Checks I'm not sure about. <laughs> I'm just saying that a traditional fighter feels more like a combo game, and you see the combos repeatedly. I watched a, a grand finals match of uh dragon ball fighter z right okay. and after that that's not street fighter though <laughs> it's like... a fu- it's a it's a very it was a very popular fighting game just a few years ago yeah popular but does that make it like a real fighting game you know like a big boy fighting game like have you like... watched it because it, it, it is it was a li- for a little bit i obviously it's not on you know street fighter level but it was for a bit I mean, it, it they they can all be played at a high level, but then there's like the big boy fighters, right? You know, <laughs> I know. I but what I'm not. trying to point out is that you're not going to know what's happening in melee if you just play the game. But if you watch a match on Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter and you see what they're doing, you can understand what's happening. Melee, there's so many things going on that you aren't exposed to at all, just on basic pick up and play. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I think you could say the same about other fighters, but I think I get, I think, I think, I, think I, get, I, I get what you're saying a little bit. But like, then stuff happens like the Daigo parry, right? <laughs> like where but that makes they're sense. like, oh yeah, this this move can't can't be parried, but and and people tried forever, and then somebody did it in a tournament, and it was considered like the greatest esports moment ever in the fighting game community because everybody thought it wasn't possible, and the guy you know was about to die, parried all the hits. And his opponent so stunned that he parried all the hits that he took the last hit and died. Yeah, that's that's an amazing, right? Like, amazing just, esports. And, yeah, and there definitely is canceling in in other in in other fighting games. Like Tekken has it built in. Like Tekken's move list when you go and try to master a character in Tekken, like um, there are even like parts of a combo or a move input where it's like a little star. The star means. Don't don't touch anything, and you have to like not touch anything for 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 a second. But like, there's moves, and then there's move cancels, right? So like, you might learn how to throw a special kick, and then right below that will be special kick cancel, right? And you you'd make it look like you're throwing it out there, but then you cancel it and you go into another combo, like so. There is like some fighting games even account for that that canceling that 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 goes on. So I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from melee, but I just. I just don't don't want to sell the fighting game community short. Like it's really no. These, that, these, these I didn't games are mean intense. that the ceiling in other fighting games aren't high. They're obviously high, or else there wouldn't be tournament scenes. What I was pointing out is the game looks a lot different at that high level of play than it does on a Saturday afternoon with your friends. Whereas yeah. the fighting games, when you watch them, they feel similar. Albeit your combos aren't as extensive and as good with your friends normally, unless you're into the community. But the the difference in visual is is like it's far different. Oh yeah, definitely they are. They're different animals. I'm I'm not comfortable with calling uh, the Smash Brothers games fighters. Like I, I think the new term brawlers is is like it, it needs to be its own thing. Like yeah. it's not it's yeah. not the same. Right. Like you could see how Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and Injustice and you know that Dragon Ball Z game, like why why all those are the same? Like just different character models, different moves, yeah. different maybe some slightly different mechanics, better or worse engines, whatever, but like it's same same concept. Two right. guys squaring off health bars, you know, complex button inputs. Yeah, that's like, fair. There, to were, say. there were there were a lot of fighters. It's... There was even like a home alone or like a sorry, a save save by the bell tournament fighter or something. What? You know, like <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? Oh, sorry. I have to look into it. Yeah, like that's a that's a brand of game, right? But then, like, then you had like the brawlers or something entirely step. Separate. What was the Shrek one? Uh, Shrek Super Slam, and that is def- <laughs> that is definitely a brawler um, on the PlayStation Two. Uh, Interesting. Only it's like three D and weird. Yeah, it's not it's it's not as good. But you build up a smash attack and you launch your opponent into oblivion and they explode. So they they were going for that Smash Brothers vibe. But, yeah. But like um, the the passion for like 
melee is just so strong. Like people love this game even to today. And um, I kind of want to bring up to the next point that like, you know, people love this game so much that they've actually made a program that um, called Slippy. And you can just play regular online against anybody. You know, it has like, you know, a ranking system. You know, you can type in like a friend code. Um, it's very plug and play too. Like, I, I mean, I probably installed this thing within five minutes and I was good to go. Like, I'm just surprised at like how easy it was to actually get this thing working. So like, if you ever want to play like Smash, like uh, Melee competitively, or you just want to have fun, like, yeah, it literally, it takes like five minutes. Listen, slip. I'm, you know, if this, if this gets me arrested, fine. But like, I tinker around with lots of emulation stuff. Like, and we play, like, we try to get things like net play going. And I know net play is relatively simple, but I'm not a computer programmer. Like, I kind of get, get, get by, right? Like, that stuff is cool that it exists, but on the whole, it's kind of a pain in the neck to work with. Yeah. Like, and if you ever tried to tinker around with it and reached a point where you're just like, oh, I give up. I can't figure out why it, why, it, why it doesn't work. My friends and I don't have the same BIOS. We don't have the same, we're not, we don't use the same emulation core. We don't, you, you know, whatever, right? Slippy is not that like you get your, you get your GameCube emulator, you get your, your disc image of melee, right? You could load up and play melee through your emulator. Fine. Now you go to Slippy's website, you download Slippy. It says, where is your emulator? You tell it, where is your melee? You tell it you're done. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. You don't even have to open up the emulator anymore. You just get a Slippy icon you can open up Slippy and then you hit the button play. And the o oh, and so it'll bring up melee and the overlay is like invisible. Like it's like a new menu just got installed into your melee game that looks like it's part of the game. Yeah. And it's the Slippy menu. It doesn't it's not like a pop-up window or anything weird like it's it's already operating on your on your controller. Insane, right? But it doesn't stop there. Now you want to play with your friends, you say. Hey, friend, go go install Slippy. Oh, my God, wasn't that easy? Yes, it was, friend. Awesome. Right? <laughs> You're ready. You got to make a friend code. Fine. Four letters, the number symbol, three numbers, right there next to your character, right there so you can see it. After you pick your character, there's no futzing around, going into alternate menus, right there, right? You enter your friend's code. Your friend enters your code. You find each other, you fight, and I don't know, like, and then after that, if you fight other friends and stuff, Slippy remembers your other friend codes. So if you go fight friend B, C, and D, and then you want to go back and fight friend A again, his code's already in there. Yeah. Like, you just you type in the first letter, and you and you, you can uh, uh, you can auto-enter the rest of it, because they were smart enough to put an auto-enter on it, so you don't even have to enter the rest of the code, and you just have to remember the first letter of your friend's code, and you just, like, you, uh, autofill it with with the z button built in on the on the on the controller and just start again boom you're back into it yeah i don't know steve can you speak to the kind of technology this is that's like lag free and stuff because i i'm just so already baffled at this at this wizardry but on top of that the darn program is basically lag free yeah slippy uses something called rollback netcode yep. and it's a technique of synchronizing game states for multiplayer games um it allows players to experience like the minimal latency and smooth gameplay. It's definitely I don't the future. Know I don't know exactly how it's programmed, but like, it, there's almost no lag it, at all. Yeah. It, like, if anybody here has played on like Smash Ultimate Online or Brawl Online or any of that stuff, it's it's pretty crappy. This feels like if you got Call of Duty and loaded it up on multiplayer and you were just playing online or like League of Legends or, you know, anything like that, it, it is the future of fighting game online. Yeah, it's, it's better than Steam play. Like it's, it's, it's way better than the Switch online experience. Does not matter what, what, what game you are playing. Like it, it really is insane and it's completely fan built. Yeah. That, like that's the impressive part. Take notes, no. Nintendo. Like, yeah. Are you so, out of your mind? Like, Right here it says, it's different from delay-based netcode, which waits for all players to synchronize their inputs before proceeding. 
Instead, rollback netcode predicts inputs, executes them immediately, and then corrects any discrepancies later. Yeah. This made Melee feel modern for me. Like, this was a better experience this week than I've ever had trying to play Smash Ultimate online. Yeah. Like, like I felt better about playing Smash Brothers this week than I have than I have playing Smash, Smash yeah. Ultimate. No, rollback is awesome. Like, it literally felt like you guys were next to me playing, like, in the same yeah. room. Like, that's how good it was. Like, on a cube. Right. Like, yeah. so good. And, you know, we're all on voice chat and discord just laughing playing and not not getting frustrated like oh i blocked and it didn't come out like it doesn't feel that way at all no yeah yeah like so many times have we tried to play multiplayer games like with our with our community and stuff and with each other and like you you just reach a point sometimes where you just can't get the thing working like you, you know god god knows why it could be any number of things you know between the two versions of the game you might have net play servers you know your your router not letting you set up a net play server like whatever like there's just none of that like it just works i love it yeah a genius thing that the slippy creators made going forward i just like you said i want companies to take notes on this that's what people want like i don't know why companies are so afraid to like just do what customers want we don't want all these like extra modes we just want working fast connections and that's basically what it boils down to because like you know as we all said it just feels great like the fact that we can play and it just it feels like you guys are literally in the same room it's amazing yeah especially considering the way that like as we get older our lives get more full and almost anybody that's getting older can understand that you don't have time to meet up with your friends on a Saturday all afternoon anymore. But now when the kids go to bed, you know, when you get time to yourself at night, it's easier to just jump on the computer and play games with your friends than it is to get together and play on the console. So if the internet is good enough to support the people wanting to play online, that resource is invaluable to us adults 100%. that have all of our extra responsibilities during the week we don't want to get on and be frustrated with some game that's lagging out online. That's just not fun. Yeah, and, and it's a bonus that you don't even have to know how to set it up. You just download and it does its thing. Yeah, like, five it's, minutes it's so max. Good. Like, and, and even that's a stretch. Like, it's so fast. It, if you want to support Slippy, they actually take donations. We're going to put a link to Slippy's website in the description of this uh, episode. So head down there if, if this is really something that's that's speaking to you. But they actually do take donations for that development. I imagine they can't monetize it another way. But uh, yeah, go go check them out. If you're any kind of Smash Brothers fan at all, and you're like our age, and you grew up playing Melee, and maybe you're feeling a little lacking about your recent Smash Brothers experience, like yeah, like go go try Melee on, on Slippy. Yeah. It feels, feels good. Real good. Like I had so much fun these past two weeks. Like I, I still want to keep playing. Like it was such a good time with you guys. Well, shit, boys, we need to play after this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I think we've we've gushed a lot about this game. Do we have like what else? What else can we say? You ready to kind of wrap this up? Yeah, I I think we hit all points pretty well. What a game! What a game! <laughs> So I did want to mention that this this was a game that was brought to us uh, by one of our viewers, Happy and viewers. Oh, right, right, two, two. Who was the other person that 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 proposed it? It was Tom, Tom right? Yep. Tom. Yeah. So we, we we did a viewer pool for this game. If you tuned in last episode, you would have seen it. Um, but uh, yeah, two two viewers teamed up together to get to bring us melee. I'm so glad they did. Thanks a bunch, guys. Um, you know, my final thoughts. Uh, oh, and if you've uh, made it this far into the episode uh be sure to leave us a like and comment on the video because we would love to meet more people who like melee and if you are so inclined join the discord i can't think of a better reason to join the discord than to play melee against each other on slippy hell yeah uh, you know our discord community is one that we hope to grow and uh play more games with like it's really one of the big points of our podcast is to get a bunch of people together to you know just log on at any given time hop onto a discord gaming couch and uh play whatever game is going on against each other um so discord link is obviously in the description uh consider subscribing to the show it's free for you it really gets us jazzed um if you're on youtube there's a, there's a subscribe button ring the bell for notifications but we're also on other podcast platforms so if you don't like to sit there and 
curl up to a two hour ish YouTube video. You could always listen to us on the commute to work. We're on pretty much every every podcast platform the three of us could collectively think of, and then some, like uh, Pocket Casts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, help me out, fellas. Got iHeart, Amazon, Amazon Music, Amazon, yeah, I was yeah about to Amazon, say that. yeah. So pretty much on on all the indexes. Go check us out over there. And if you haven't already, leave us a kind rating and review, an honest rating or or review, but try to be kind if you can. <laughs> yeah. Um. I've also noticed that on our videos, we have a fair amount of views, but not too many likes. And that's just a small thing that anybody can do to just like the video and help us on our algorithm. Absolutely. Like, you know, it it's not asking a whole lot to click one thing, I'd hope. I mean, if I watch a video and I like it, I click like. And it, it would be really helpful for us if you guys could uh, just click that like button at the very least. Got to appease the algorithm gods. <laughs> it does feel like that sometimes so fellas you want to give your final thoughts on uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee I feel like we should do Steve last because Steve's got a Steve's, Steve's got a wax poetic about this yeah sure thing um, yeah obviously for me like this is a great game I have treasured memories that I'll take to the grave with me this game is just so good I have so much memories like we all said we built strong bonds and friendships through this game you know even in high school like it's one of my fond memories believe it or not playing this game if you are interested in this game at all and want to give it a try like i like we said like slippy five minutes is tops and then you can start playing this game join the discord and you know we'll play there right with you those are my thoughts so you know i think we can all sort of relate but uh I didn't have like the best time through elementary and high school, just like socially, you know, I was always like that kind of awkward kid. I loved video games. I was kind of nerdy. Right. You know, and like, I don't know how schools are nowadays, but back then, like it was really segregated into who you are and what you like to do. And I I didn't have too many friends. Like I had a really close, like core, small, small group of friends, but like didn't really get along with with other people. But games like Soul Calibur and Mega Man Battle Network and Super Smash Brothers Melee, you know, really got me through that time in my in my childhood where like I could go and I could play with a bunch of people and I could feel like I belonged. Like it just I have such a strong emotional attachment to this game, you know, and I think I don't know that I would have the friends that I have today as as close as they are and like I don't know if I would necessarily be the exact same person that I am today if uh I had never played Super Smash Brothers Melee. So, yeah, just phenomenal game. Yeah, isn't it crazy though? I want to say like nine times out of ten, out of high school, like within I would say like five years, you don't talk to those same people again. And the fact that we that we still all together and still talking, and I'm not saying do a me- podcast. Yeah, I'm not saying like melee is like the sole reason, but like I, the fact that we're all still together that tells you like you know video games in general are just such a powerful bond. They really are. Yeah, and. For me, these guys, you know, touched on a lot of the things that make it special for me. Um, I still follow the competitive scene, and I spend a lot of free time watching uh, Melee still, because it had such a profound impact on me. Like, I... uh, Most... In high school, there were two things that I did. I played Magic the Gathering on the weekends, and I played Smash every other day. That was it. Smash was my, like, entire life in high school. It's all I wanted to do. It's all I thought about most of the time, other than Magic the Gathering. And all of my really close friendships were bonded over that game. I would say that I have, like, five, maybe six incredibly close friends, and we all played Smash in high school. It is a testament to my, uh, to our friendships in general, how powerful this game was socially, even though there was no social aspect within the game. It was all outside of the game, laughing about you know, sending your friend into the air and then your friend intercepts him with another aerial and it's just the laughs and the joy. It's just, there's not really much in my young adult life uh, before, you know, meeting my wife and having our children 
there wasn't as many opportunities to like have emotional connections on things. We were just getting busier and busier as life went on. But this brings me back to a time when I didn't have to worry about, you know, feeding myself. I didn't have to worry about paying rent. I didn't have to worry about my car payment or going to work or any of that stuff. I was able to be a kid with this game and coming back to it with you guys specifically, even though every now and then I play Slippy by myself. These last two weeks brought me back to being a kid again, where I didn't have as many worries. I could just log on, play Melee, and hit people. You know, it, it just, there aren't, uh, there, there aren't enough words to describe my, my experience with it. It's just a big part of me. Well said. Well, regrettably, time marches on. And as much as I don't want to, we're going to set Super Smash Brothers Melee aside, as far <laughs> as the Cable Club is concerned. The show. You can yeah. still play it on Discord. Yeah. I think we still will play it on Discord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, do we have a doozy of an episode coming up. Right, guys? So We do. We're going to do a Coliseum episode. So we kind of alluded last episode that year two for us is going to mark some pretty big changes um, in how we conduct this show. Lots of fun stuff. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Uh, if you're a longtime fan, but uh, we're gonna do a um, a coliseum, uh, our last for a little while, and it's between two titles that uh, you know. These are what you call games, <laughs> right? Juggernauts. So they're both on the peerless Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and both have been argued multiple times across the airwaves and the internet as perhaps being the greatest games of all time. They're both very long, epic adventures that took us into fantastic worlds that we could we could barely even make up in our young days. Next episode, we are doing a knockdown drag out battle between Final Fantasy VI, 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 or three. <laughs> Final Fantasy 3 if you're in the states that's that's what what we got um and Chrono Trigger this is going to be a doozy I have beaten both of these games probably like I think I beat 6 like 3 or 4 times and Chrono Trigger probably like 10 or more times wow impressive so I'm curious to play Chrono Trigger so you know I want to see what all the hype's about yeah I've probably beaten Chrono Trigger like twice i think two or three times um i have not beaten final fantasy 3 slash 6 um so that'll be fun i don't know why i haven't gotten around to it but this is a perfect time too so i'm curious to see if it stacks up to chrono trigger well i hope it does they're both amazing and i'm excited to talk about them in two weeks so join us in two weeks or follow us on facebook or our socials you can see us kind of posting our hype about it before we get into that episode and uh i think that's all i had for today fellas how about you i think that's it all right see you next time game over game over game over